You know, the Word of God says this. It says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And we've got to come to a place where, where we are people who want truth. You know, we're, we are very human. Anybody ever notice that? And sometimes when God says to do such and such, but it's not always easy to do what God wants us to do. Is that okay to talk like that? Because, it, it, you know, you've got to stand strong or you've got to be, you know, you, 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 you're going to be different to somebody else or you're going to say something there that may offend somebody else. But I, I believe that we've, we've got to come to a place where, where we don't want to compromise. But if we're going to see the hand of God move mightily in Australia, the church must hear the truth. And we must be people who want to abide by the truth. And not just easy street or easy way out. You know, there's a lot of ways the Bible says that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. And we've got to be aware of this, that, you know, something that might sound good may be the thing that will take us to death takes you out of the presence of God, away from the will of God to something that, that satisfies our logic. And our logic is obviously one of our great enemies. But the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I believe to get the victory in life, you must listen to the right information. We're, we're living in a day when there's lots of information, but we've got to listen to the right information. How many people know that there's lots and lots of people that are counseling everybody and they're sort of propagating their thoughts or their good ideas? I want to tell you, friends, we need to be very, very careful in the day that we're living in that we're here, Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, anointed decisions that you and I should make. And when we, go, when we do that, we can, we can uh, take it to the bank, I believe. See, if you've got wrong information, you are bound to make wrong decisions. In Romans 1, uh, 16 and 17, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We've got, we've got to come to a place, friends, where, where whatever this book says, that's it. Amen? It settles it. If God says that this is wrong, it's well, whatever it is, it's wrong. We can't compromise. I've heard politicians recently say that, that if they go through the vote and, and they, and they uh, bring in uh, same-sex marriage and things like that, that we have to accept it. Friend, I will never accept that. Amen? I don't have to accept that. But you see, this is what's going on. If it gets voted in and that's what the people want, well, then we have to accept it. No, it's what does God want? <laughs> Amen? We don't have to accept it, but anyhow. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Everybody say is. It's amazing when in the prayer meeting this morning, this word was coming out all the time. The power of God. The power of God. The gospel is the power of God. And I was listening as Chris was praying. I'm thinking, yeah, we're on the same wavelength here. But you see, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. We spoke last week about sozo. It means to rescue. It means to deliver. It means to preserve. It means to heal. It means to have a sound mind. This is what God, it carries. It's got something in it. I'm not ashamed of the Word of God because it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also uh, for the Greek. That's us, Gentiles. For in it, everybody say in it. In it, the righteousness of God is revealed. You see, this is not just a book. This book is something more than just a book. It contains something, amen. In it, in it is the ways of righteousness. In it, this book carries the power of God, amen. You get a revelation of the Word of God, it's the power of God in it. This is not just a book that people study. This is a book that we can live by, amen. 
This is a book that, that is, I'm not ashamed of this book. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the power of God. Because this book contains, it carries something so dynamic and so powerful. It, it, it's the Word of God. It's God's covenant to us. It's what God wants you and I to understand. He wants you and I to know. It's okay. If it fell out, it, it wasn't meant to be in there. <laughs> but how many people can say amen? It is the power of God. It is an amazing book. It contains, it carries, it, it, it reveals. It, it, it's, it's amazing. The gospel, the word, is the power of God. I, I want the power of God. For in it, the word uh, contains the truth, the facts that God reveals to us by a spirit. This book ha has got something so dynamic. God got involved with this book. God put himself in this book. God has anointed this book. And in this book, it contains the power of God. It contains a revelation. It contains the anointing. And as we get in there, the Bible says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those that love Him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. And God wants to reveal, he wants, he wants, but He wants us to, to somehow or other get something on the inside of us. But friend, we don't want to just be listening to compromise. What I'm saying today is that we need to know the truth. It's the truth that will make us free. I do not want an excuse for the reason why I do something that I know God is not pleased with. Oh, I can't help myself. It's the flesh. Friend, I want to tell you, God gives us power to destroy and overcome the works of the flesh. Do you believe that? He wants a church that, know the power, that knows the power of God. He wants a church that understands what this book is all about. The gospel, the word is the power of God. For in it, the word uh, contains the truth, the facts that God reveals to us by a spirit. We must listen to the right information. If we uh, want, a, want breakthroughs in our life, how many people want breakthrough in your life? Come on. How many people, if you want to, come on, lift up your hands. Let's be honest. Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Father, we come to, right now, we need a breakthrough in our life. And we know that the only way we're going to get breakthrough is not by compromise, but it's by the truth. It's the truth that makes us free. Compromise will just take us deeper into despair and brokenness. So Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you see these hands, help us to understand and take hold of your word and break through in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Rule number one, if you want breakthrough in your life, is let God be God. <laughs> That's pretty simple, isn't it? Let God be God. I've often said, as I've been preaching before, that Jesus wants his church back. He, he wants to be head of the church. He wants his word, in other words, to be what, what we go by, not by compromise, not by, by thoughts or different things. So number one, let God be God. Number two, trust in his word. Trust the word. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. Trust in the Word of God. Don't try to take the easy way out. Don't try to uh, take that easy way out. If it's not according to His Word, don't do it. Many people, many well-being people can give wrong information. Wrong information wrong, will equal wrong decisions. Regarding finance, I'm talking about breakthrough. I've heard lots of people when, with finance. How many people really trust God? You see, what, what happens is somebody there that may, not, may have had a problem in their life or something like that with finance, and you're, you're going through a bit of a financial problem, and, 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 you know, some well-being person, good person will, look, will talk to you and, and counsel with you. And you say, I find a little bit difficult with finance today. But you know what, friend, I want to tell you, the enemy comes to rob, to kill and destroy. He comes because he doesn't want you to enter into the blessing of God. He doesn't want, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. Is that correct? 
So God, so the enemy comes to rob and to kill and to destroy. So when the enemy comes and there is a war, how many people know that there's a war going on? There's a battle going on. It's raging, friend. There's a war going on to stop people from putting their trust in God and putting their trust in something else. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but friends, somewhere along the line, we've got to be able to be the ones that said, I trust in the Lord my God. And so good, good-hearted people might say to somebody, you're going through something, and they say, well, listen, you don't need to pay your tithe. You don't need to do that. Look, God understands. God doesn't mind. God understands everything, amen? God, it's, it's not a matter of this, but I want to tell you that is wrong information. It makes, okay, that sounds good. And then, you know, later on, God is a God of grace and He's the God of mercy. And people go through, still going through and everything's going okay. But then later on in life, something goes wrong and they're, and they're looking and they're complaining and they're starting to say, hey, I don't know. Nothing's going right for me. Everything's going wrong for me. There's this. I want to tell you, friends, sooner or later it catches up with you because when you start to compromise the Word of God, it continues. I believe and I trust in God and I want to tell you this, I can say this for, from Nancy and I, be, we've paid our tithes from the day we got saved and I want to tell you, if God before you, who can be against you and God has provided for us, we've never went without, we've never been in, in a place of direness. We've always been able to triumph over that area, amen? We're not multi-millionaires, but I want to tell you, we've got dinner on our plate every day. We've got everything that we need, amen, and more. We're blessed. But what I'm saying is wrong information, wrong decision will bring a wrong decision regarding finance or whatever it is. We're wanting to uh, go talk about breakthrough, not putting a, a Band-Aid on a problem. Poor old Job, he was, he was going through some stuff there. And, you know, what he was going through is because... It's something there that I, I pray that, that God never has to have a talk to the devil and said, hey, have you considered Neil? <laughs> and, and the devil said, yeah, but you put a hedge around him. Yeah, I'll, I'll remove that. You have a go at him. Uh, he's, he's not going to deny me. And, and of course, Job went through hell. And of course, what does his wife say to him? He says, she says, why don't you curse God and die? Well, at the moment, that most likely would have sounded a good idea. <laughs> Because he'd lost everything, basically. He was in a place there. But what I'm, this is what I'm trying to say is, friend, when the enemy comes like that and he comes to, uh, to rob and to kill and destroy, it's not a time to compromise the Word of God. It's a time that you hang on to the Word of God and you get hold of the Word of God and you say, hell, we'll have to freeze over before I'm going to stop doing what I know the Word of God tells me to do. Because I want to tell you, in due season, God's going to bring a breakthrough in your life. Amen. We know in Job's life, he had a breakthrough that he blessed him more than he'd ever been blessed before. We don't understand some things, but all I know is that the enemy is trying to get the church to compromise the Word of God. Friend, God doesn't need your money. I don't need your money. <laughs> This is not because the tithes are down. This is not because we're having trouble with the finance. We are in, in the red, hallelujah. No, no, we're in the black, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> we are not in the red. <laughs> we don't need anything. <laughs> God supplies all of our need according to His riches and glory. When there is something that's coming up, somehow or other, God provides in Jesus' name. Amen. When we're building the Sunshine Coast, we run out of money in the natural. And I said to God, what can we do? We got this building half finished. And God said, sell the sandstone. I thought, my God, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I didn't even know that you could sell it. But see, what I'm saying is God will make a way. If you're faithful to God, He will be faithful to you. We find Queen Esther, you know, this young, young Jewish girl that finds herself, uh, you know, married to this, this, whoever he was. What was his name? That fella. Yeah, that fella. And there was a guy by the name of Haman, so full of himself, so full of pride, so full of everything there. And, and man, I, I, I love reading about this fella because it, it really, you know, anyhow. 
And here he is there, you know, the, the, the king says, you know, what can be, because this Haman had already been put up into, a, into such a high position. And, and he's so, you know, he walks into the king's breath. And the king says, what should we do to the man that the king wants to bless? Immediately, he rushes, oh, he wants to bless me. He wants to bless me. So he thinks of the greatest thing that he could ever have. Oh, that you should get one of your finest horses that you've ridden on. You should get one of the best robes that you've ever worn. You should uh, you give him the biggest, best ring you've ever worn. And you should put him on this horse and put this clothes on him and put the ring on his finger and glory to God. And you should get some one of the highest nobles to lead him through the, through the city and say, this is what happens to the man that God wants to bless. The poor guy had a real bad attitude towards a fella. What was the bloke's name? Mordecai. Mordecai. God's going to do this to the devil. Eh? Haman's the type of the devil, amen? Mordecai is the type of the church. Standing and... and, and, and Can can you imagine this poor guy? Oh, what a wonderful idea! Take Mordecai and do unto him according to your word. Don't leave anything out. <laughs> Can you imagine? Haman, this is what... <laughs> it would have been like swallowing barbed wire. Eh? You got the drift? This poor guy... Then, then, you know, he got so angry. So what does he do? He goes to his friends and to his wife and says, oh, God's blessed me, but I, I can't handle it. This man will not bow to me. What can I do? What can I do? And they, they come up with wrong information. Build a gallows 50 cubics high. Go into the king and tell the king, blah, blah, blah. Poor guy ended up getting hung on those gallows himself. You know, I believe that the devil's going to get hung on his own gallows. Amen. But friend, I want to tell you, wrong information will take us down the road that the enemy wants to take us. It's only the truth. I am not ashamed of this book. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed to live by what God says to do. I am not ashamed to put God first. I am not ashamed to say, I am not taking any notice of the situation, the circumstances, what I see around me. I'm going to put my faith in the Word of God. And if God says, if I pay my tithes, He will bless me. And if God says, if I believe with all my heart, He will heal me. And if God says this and what God says that, well, I'm going to put my trust in God, hallelujah, and not in anything else. And if I've offended anybody's doctrine, praise the Lord. (laughs) Take it up with Chris later on. (laughs) Kendall's over there smiling. Take it up with Kendall. He'll have it. Don't take it up with Joe. (laughs) Job 2.9, if you want to read the story. Esther 5.14, if you want to read the story. The Word of God says that you are to forgive so your heavenly Father can forgive you. Your flesh and the devil say, no, they deserve it. (laughs) The Bible says, trust in the Lord. Do according to what the Word of God says. I don't know about you, but humble pie never tastes good. I heard somebody made a cherry pie, uh, something else pie, pumpkin pie. Didn't get any, but praise God, I heard about it. <laughs> that Freddy ate it all, I bet. You can see him now with crust all over his mouth, all over him. Never let Freddy near a bag of prawns. (laughs) You don't know Freddy, but I know Freddy. (laughs) Humble pie never tastes good to start with. It only tastes good 
after. Amen? If we really want breakthrough, we can't just do it our way. The Bible says that even about tithes. And you know, you can be saying, well, I'm, I, I give it and nothing. The Bible says if you pay your tithes and, you've got, and you come to the church with your tithe and you've got something against your brother, you're better off just leaving it at the altar and then going and sorting it out with the person. God did warn us. He did say, my ways are not your ways. My ways are higher than your ways. My ways get results. It's whether we want results, whether we want the blessing, whether we want God to open the windows of heaven, whether we want God, whether we want God, <laughs> or whether we want our own opinion. See, what happens a lot of times is we can sort, we can go around. You will find somebody that will come into agreement with what you believe, right, wrong, or indifferent. Amen. But what we've got to do is find out what God says. He's not hidden himself. He's really shown himself very, very strong. Amen. Forgive, whatever it might be. Wrong information, I believe, can stop the hand of God touching your life. That's worth writing down. Wrong information can stop the hand of God blessing your life if you swallow it, if you take it, if you receive it. I believe that God wants your mind and soul to be impregnated with the Word of God. So you begin to think God thoughts and think like God. One of the interesting things about the Word of God, you can get all different types of people. You can get hard people. You can get tough people. You can get soft people. You can get nice people. <laughs> you can get horrible people. They're all over the place. I know we were all one of them somewhere along the line. But you see, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and the presence of God comes upon you and you soak in the presence of God, you get marinated. Now you can marinate a piece of fillet, a piece of chuck, or a piece of boot leather. <laughs> the boot leather will be tough, but it'll taste the same as the fillet. <laughs> you just won't be able to chew it. But it, you know what I'm talking about. It'll taste the same. Because it's the God flavor. It's the God thing. And some of those people there that are tough and hard can, can be more in love or just as much in love with God as anybody else. And their actions and, their, and the way that they do things and, and, and so forth, and they change. But friend, we've got to be impregnated with the Word of God. So that when something happens to us, I would, I would imagine, what with me anyhow, the first reaction is very, very natural. Anybody else like that? But you see, and you might spit and kick and yell. Looking at me like a cow looks at a new gate. Our pastor would never do that. <laughs> He's so holy. Come on. <laughs> Most of us are like the rest of us, Finn. You are not the only person that reacts the way you react. And you might kick and spit and shout and get upset or something like that. But what I'm saying, if you're impregnated with the Word of God and the Word of God is there, when the dust settles, all of a sudden, that which was in you will start to rise up. Amen? And you'll start to, God's thoughts will come into your mind. God's thinking will come into your mind. You'll start acting like God acts. You'll start to do things which God does, like forgive, forget, and do different stuff, and start speaking the Word of God. 
Jesus, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the heart of God. Jesus had to rely on the word of God. Jesus had to rely on the mighty Holy Spirit. You and I are are the same. We have to rely on the word of God and we have to rely on the mighty power of God to raise us up, hallelujah. Whatever God says, God's word is truth. It is yea, it is amen. God wants our mind and soul to be impregnated with His Word so that we begin to think God thoughts. Is that a good idea? Amen. Don't have to shout just because I'm preaching so good here. Amen. (laughs) Oh my God. Begin to act like God, think like God. Then and only then we'll be able to make the right decisions and see the power of God released. How many people want to see the power of God released? Well, how many people know that God never changes? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes. The power of God has not diminished. It is still just as powerful as it ever was. Why isn't it operating? Why don't we see the flow? It's the church where the blockage is. Oh, we didn't like that one. You're doing so good until you said that, Neil. <laughs> now you're putting it back on us. <laughs> no, come on. How many, come on. Is that okay? And, 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 I, and I believe that, that we've been lulled to sleep in Delilah's lap. Because a lot of wrong information has been poured out into the church. And even today, and we've said it many, many times, the different thinkings in the church, you know, we don't want to offend people. This political correctness has gone so stupid. So, so, So we won't talk about the blood of Jesus. We may offend somebody. My God, we won't talk in tongues. Somebody might be offended. We won't do this. You know, shortly it'll be no different to a bowls club. Eh? <laughs> oh, Rabbi Shaska Monday. Anybody here got a GPS in your car? Mine's got a lady's voice. Yeah. Hey, do you talk to your GPS? <laughs> Anybody here talk? <laughs> Shut your eyes. <laughs> and you're the only other person in the car, but somehow or other you've got this companion with you. And you're all going down the road and she says, <laughs> No, that's the wife. No, this is the GPS. You're going down the road and, and she says uh, something. And you, and you say, you say to it, where do you think you're taking me? Eh? Famous words, eh? And she says, turn left. That's not the way. So you turn right. Do a U-turn. My, my, too bad we don't have one of these in our, in, that would, yeah, yeah, yeah. My GPS is so smart. She's tricked me that many times. She doesn't tell me I've gone the wrong way. Recalculating, rec- the other one, yes. recalculate, recalculating. This one, she don't do that. She's subtle. I'm just, I just, I turn right. So she doesn't say anything. She just says, in 100 yards or meetings, what a turn left. So I, okay, turn left. See, I've got it on the right track. She, she's going my way now. I've got to turn left. Up another 200, turn left. Before I know where I am, I'm back where I started. <laughs> hey? Hey? I don't know what this has got to do with the message. No. But, but the, the thing is this, is that 
We've got to understand that that woman usually knows where I'm wanting to go. <laughs> because somewhere or other she's got satellites in, up there and she can see everything. You know, God can see everything. And he wants you to go left and you want to go right. You want to do, you want to get angry. He says, no, forget. <laughs> he tells you this and that. My poor old GPS has got spit all over it. <laughs> Where do you think you're taking me? That's not the way. <laughs> You know, when the Spirit of God starts talking, why do you want me to do that? That's not the way. <laughs> Let the Lord have his way. Let the Lord have, have his way. Amen. There's no peace. There's no rest until the Lord has his way. Take Abraham, for example. God said he was going to have a son. Naturally speaking, nothing was in line with God's promise. What did his body say? His body said, you're too old. Even his wife, Sarah, was too old. She was barren. Mine said, this is impossible. Don't make a fool of yourself by believing God. Don't make a fool of yourself. What did he do? Every, God gave him a name. Changed his name so that every time he opened up his mouth, and they said, what's your name? He said, Abraham said, I'm the father of many nations. I bet he wanted to go back to Abram. <laughs> but I want to tell you, friends, God is going to have an end time church. And I don't care what I see. I don't care what's going on around about my life. I don't care. Hell is going to have to freeze over. I believe that this end time church that you and I are part of, I don't care how old you are. I don't care what, what's going on in your life. All I know is that God is going to raise up a church in this day that you and I live in that's going to kick the devil's butt. Hallelujah. Going to push him back under our feet, amen. Abraham could have said this, he could have said that, he could have said a lot of things. But instead in Romans 4 verse 20, he said, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. The promise contained the power of God. And friend, I want to tell you this, when God reveals to you that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed, that is the promise of God. And I want to tell you that the promise of God contains the power in it. When God says, you shall be endured with power from on high, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, I want to tell you that the, 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 the power was in the promise, hallelujah. Whatever God says, when God says and gave us a promise, I believe that there's some 360 plus promises, one for every day of the week. There's promises in that book, so many of them, that every one of those promises contain the power of God in it. When God says, you are going to become the father of many nations, the power of God was in the promise. But I want to tell you, if you get wrong information, I don't care how powerful the promise is, if you get wrong information, you could end up with an Ishmael. If you listen to your flesh, if you listen to your natural man, if you listen to the, the, what your heart, what your natural body thinks, it's too difficult to do this. It's too hard to believe God. And you go like that. I want to tell you, you'll end up with an Ishmael. And I want to tell you, if you look today, Ishmael is one of the greatest problems that humanity faces in this planet right now. All because of wrong information. Wife said, honey, I can't make it. But there's some hope for you. Take Hagar. Take my concubine. Take her. Sounded right to him. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Friend, it's either God's way or the highway. Amen. And I believe that's where, where the church is coming back to this. The church has got to come back 
to this sort of thing. And I, and I believe that, that what happened uh, to, to Abraham will happen to you and me if we can believe. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. The promise contained the power of God, giving glory to God and being fully convinced. Friend, I want to tell you, you've got no idea the power of praise. You've got no idea the enemy wants to put you into despair. He wants to put you down the gurgler. He wants you down there in, in the valley of despair. But I want to tell you, friends, if you can raise yourself up, it doesn't matter what's going on. You've got to throw your hands in the air and you've got to start to rejoice. I want to tell you, friends, we go, can go through some things. I might be going through something this morning, but I want to tell you when Jody started singing that song about running and so forth, I ran up the back there and I started running around the back because I want to tell you, friends, that you've got, to, you've got to do something if you want to get out of the rut, if you want to get out of the hole, if you want to get out and have a breakthrough in your life, you're the one that's got to rise up. It's not me. It's not somebody else. It's not the musicians up there. It's you individually that's got to rise up and you've got to put some, something on the in, some substance on the inside of you and declare the goodness of God. Amen. Start to praise Him. Hallelujah. With a loud voice. Whatever it takes. Amen. Breakthrough, smash through, destroy the works of Satan. Destroy the works of Satan. But we're strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. The power is in the promise. The power is in the Word of God. Amen. The power is in the anointing. Joe spoke about he had a dream. He had a dream. I have a dream. Amen. I have a dream of seeing a church, a church that will reach its full stature in the things of God. I have a dream of seeing a church where the worship becomes such a crescendo, such, such a, a volume of people worshiping God that the, it doesn't matter if the band quit, the people keep going, hallelujah. And the, and the people take the band to another level. The band will take us to a sofa and then we just as a, a, just a huge Amen. Just worshiping the king and seeing people jumping out of wheelchairs, people being totally released. I want to tell you, friends, I have a dream of the power of God because God said in the last days He is going to have a church without spot or wrinkle. I believe that God is going to eliminate that sin factor out of our lives. There's going to be a people that are going to know the righteousness of God. Amen. There's a people that are going to know what it is to be washed in the blood, what it is to be healed by the power of God. To see a bunch of people just like as they came out of Egypt, there was not one weak or sick among them. Instead of coming in, one way and we're going to go out another way healed delivered hallelujah I want to make an example of this fella here last week in church the power of God obviously touched him he got out to his car he sat in his car and then he realized something had happened that he left his water bottle and his and his cd in in the church he forgot where he was, who he was, and what's wrong with him. He jumped out of his car and walked over to this building as totally normal and whole as anybody could ever be. And as he picked up his water bottle and as he picked up his CD, his flesh man started to say, hey, you can't do this. And that's what happened to you, brother. Your flesh man said, you can't do this. But friend, oh, you should have just said, I just did it, hallelujah. And what I did, I'm going to do again. Friend, I want to, that's, I'm talking about fight, amen. I'm talking about fight. I'm talking about rising up against it. It's easy to lay down. It's easy to sit down. It's easy to shut up. But I want to tell you, if you want to break through, we're going to yell to the top of our heads, amen. We're going to shout until the, Jesus comes back. Glory to God, amen. Amen. How many people want to see something like that happen? Where's the musicians? Let's get up there. Oh, hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Oh, Jesus. If you're a visitor with us today, there's a little welcome pack for you at the back. I was going to bring some radishes this morning. They're hot too. Glory to God. That would have got you going. <laughs> I forgot to bring the radishes. You know what? Can I say this just before the band starts? How many people remember 
Some time ago, I asked people who would like radish, a radish. And I had a lot of hands up and I had seeds and they were in a packet and I tore a piece off and I gave everybody a seed. You know what? The rest of those seeds I've had in a packet for, since then. And about three or four weeks ago, I found them and I thought I'll plant them. And they've all come up. I've got radishes that big everywhere. Amen. <laughs> You've got a word of God inside you. While I had that seed sitting in my shed, it wasn't doing anything. But when I sowed it, when I planted it, and I'm not talking about finance now. I'm just talking about the word of God. Sow it. Speak it. Share it. And see the fruit come forth in Jesus' name. Amen. I didn't know if they'd grow. I thought they'd be too old. Then I started seeing the little green shoots. Up came the little, now the red things in there. I've got radishes. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet in this house today. I don't know where you're at today and I don't know if the Word of God's touched your heart today and, and you may today want to respond to something that's been said or something in your heart. You might want to come and punch my head in <laughs> if I said something to offend you. But I honestly believe that responding to God is our first step. So if God's talking to you, sharing something, why don't you just respond to God? You might say, but oh man, I, 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 I've been in the ministry for 40 years. I can't. Yeah, no, I don't care how long you've been. I, I'm out here every week. <laughs> if God's talking to you, just, just come and let his presence wash over you. Let the anointing just come in its own special way and do a work in your heart. Friend, I want to tell you, attitudes come out, wrong attitudes come out of wrong thinking, out of wrong advice. Whether it's just something that you got yourself, but I want to tell you, that most likely if it's wrong, it's the enemy signed it into your mind. Just come if, if God's talking to you. Just let the Spirit of God walk over, walk over your life, touch your life.